Hey everybody, Ryan F. MTG here. Before we talk about today's topic, I do want to do a little sub goal update. So at the beginning of October, I talked about how I really, really want to make a push for 1,000 subs in October or as soon as possible. And thank you everyone that's you know subbed in October or just before on my channel. You know it's greatly appreciated, and we're kind of getting far. We're about like 750 upper 700s right now. And last week I did make the sub goal of 800, so kind of like the first like milestone towards the 1000 of doing a meta breakdown. However, world qualifier is less than a week away and I really, really wanted to put out a meta breakdown this week because I thought it would be good for me to kind of evaluate all the decks that I really think are the best and that I might be playing for worlds. and. I assume other people would really like to enjoy that before the world qualifier this weekend. So I am actually going to be doing that before we hit the 800. However, I still wanted to make a 800 goal, so I tweaked it around a little bit. The new uh, sub goal for 800, the celebration will be a TOA legendary tier list. So basically, I've done this on the channel before. It will be taking all the legendary cards, you know, actions and units uh, from the new set TOA and ranking them from best to worst. And I thought that would be a kind of fun thing. So hopefully by, you know, next week or something, we'll be able to do a TOA legendary tier list. So if you want to see that, if you haven't pet the little corgi in the bottom right corner, that's the sub button and each and every sub obviously means a lot to me. Like I just said in my intro, I decided to put out my meta snapshot before we got to 800 subs because I really like thinking critically and in depth about the decks and I thought people would really enjoy and hopefully maybe get some sort of information from this video before Worlds Qualifier. So I decided to switch it around and do this video anyways and switch the sub goal. So I'm picking my five meta decks that I think are the best right now for the meta and for the Worlds Qualifier coming up this weekend. However, you know, these can change over time, but these are the decks that I've been playing the most with or decks that I think are the strongest. Some of these decks I haven't played that much. This is not in any particular order. However, right now my tentative list, I will be talking about the decks that I think are the strongest to the weakest in the five, but some of them are so close that I don't want to be like the number one best deck, but it is tentatively kind of in that order. The first deck that I want to talk about is Amaterasu, Great Divine Intervention. To no one's surprise, because this has been all around the ladder, I've made videos about this, I played this in the Tepin Trial Cup just a little bit ago, this is a, such a powerful hero art and deck, because dealing 3 damage to all your opponent's units, plus 2 HP, is such a fantastic hero power in a vacuum, but especially in this meta where there's so many unit-based decks, this hero power is just so, so good. Then you're peer pairing the hero power with just intrinsically really strong growth units of all the dogs, you know, something that whenever it grows, it throws around 2 damage, Rashid, Chill Penguin, all these really, really good things, and then pairing it up with uh, Axel and Amaterasu herself, uh, these really ridiculous legendary cards, uh, and then top end of Ken as well as Dragoon, you have these tons of units that when one dies, you can just drop another one. And most of them have growth, so your Grizzled Veteran X amount of number can get so high pretty darn fast, and that is so good because then this could just be a 2 MP, kill something, or kill two things, or deal some damage, and then your dogs and your units can kill the rest. And what I really like about this list is the three Ascend units with two Spile Pegasus and Dragoon like I talked about, because you do have so many growth units that once they you know, achieve all their growth, like Rashid and Chill Penguin and all that, they might be very, very weak then, and then you can just ascend over it and restart the clock, as it were. To kind of round out that whole package, you're playing a playset of Rescuer's Bullet, and this is the new addition. I did take out the three Friendly Feud, because yes, Friendly Feud is great on, you know, Rashid or Dog or just anything to trigger growth, really, and plus two attack. However, there are so many disarms and... Fate of the Unworthies and stuff running around rapid in this meta right now, where I like to be more reactionary than starting the action response phase, right? So if they try to seal one of my units, 
I can respawn with the two free MP with Rescuer's Bullet, and then what's fantastic is you deal five damage to their board, you bounce it to your EX pocket, and then you have another unit to play again to restart its trigger stuff or to trigger growth on other units on the field. And then, of course, we are playing Liberation slash Trump Card and Sun Goddess because all these legendaries are so, so powerful. I have been thinking about maybe taking out Trump Card just because you don't have tons of high end. But every time I think about it, I just play it and then I win a game that I shouldn't be winning. My main thing that I might be changing in the future with this deck is three Rescuer's Bullet can be a lot because it can kind of be a little clunky or dead in hand. So maybe take it out one Rescuer's Bullet to add a different action or maybe even just a fourth Spiral Pegasus or something like that could go a long way. But overall, this deck is fantastic, and if you haven't tried it out, you definitely should if you want to just play this intrinsically raw, powerful deck. Deck number two that I want to showcase is none other than Chun-Li Yawn. This has definitely been a deck that's been a round, and then it got, it was rampant, then it got some nerfs, and then it kind of came back, and it's back. It's very, very good in the meta. And this is just kind of a more traditional, you know, you're playing a lot of MP ramp units of the new feline, the old feline, a playset of layer, and then just two irises. So you're playing a lot of MP, trying to just get all the MP that you can over and over and over, and then ascend over those things once you have a ton of MP with a playset of rainy, and then to its case, because this is such a powerful card, right? Five MP for a two five with heavy pierce and crush ascend plus two plus three, and with crush, it's taking so much less damage overall that it is a heavy hitter that sticks on the board and that's exactly what you want. And then of course you are playing Lady Karen because this is a seal. Seals are very important in this meta. And this is just a heavy hitter because 5 MP for a 410 hits hard and fast and is hard to remove from the opponent. And then you are playing, speaking about seal, two seal dinos because seal's great. And then you can use the seal dino and then ascend over it, or it can just kind of trade and, you know, it dies a little bit later. But hey, you got the seal off, and that's kind of why this card is in this deck. And then, of course, you are playing the play set of Nero because this gets so big so fast. And especially right now, we are in a unit based meta. Spillover is fantastic. You drop Nero in the middle lane hopefully you have a new feline or something like this so it's getting you know plus two plus three plus four and it's just all that spillover damage just adding up and racking up it feels fantastic to round out all the units you are playing disarms and action as well as dolls memory you know seven soaring spirits to just gain more and more and more hp and natural cycle because this card is just fantastic because it's just this like reset especially against like Ouroboros or something like that and Trinity and I will freely admit I didn't like this card when it first came out I did not think this card was that good but man in this shell your Trinity count can get very high very fast or you know what even if it's just two and if you have three units and it's plus two plus two to three units that can go a very long way so overall i think chun li yon is a very very good deck right now but especially in this meta yes there are a lot of decks with a lot of removal especially killing three and four mp units and even five mp units however you're you are kind of resilient to those effects because you are cheating on MP and gaining so much MP where, sure, they fade to the unworthy, your MP ramp unit, you probably are gaining some MP ramp and then you can just play another one and then another one and then a rainy over that. You're kind of just so streamlined that you could just keep on snowballing even when the opponent is dealing with your units. And against one of the other best decks that we just talked about of Growth Wolf, you have a lot of shields and a lot of HP. Yes, Growth Wolf can kind of just bulldoze its way through you, but you have a lot of defenses, and then especially trying to capitalize on, hey, I'm going to get more MP than you, so that I can put even more HP and units than you can, because guess what? You already dealed some damage to my units. LOL, I don't care. I'm just going to put a rainy down, and now this boy has 10 HP and spillover. That's really, really big. 
The third deck that I want to talk about is none other than Akuma Raging Demon. This deck kind of sees some play here or there, but in this meta it is seeing more and more play because this meta can be very very aggressive but can also be grindy and yes Akuma Raging Demon is definitely not an aggressive deck. It is a grindy deck and that's maybe some of its problems because do you really want to bring an extremely grindy deck to Worlds Qualifier where it's like hey you have three hours to climb as high as you possibly can. I'm not sure, but if your win percentage with Akuma Raging Demon is very good, then yeah, that's definitely worth it. This deck is so good because you have a lot of MP ramp units like Zombie and Uni that when they die, or even Gate, when they die, you gain an MP. So you could just keep on putting threats out there, threats out there, and then they just kind of hit. Gate hits for hard, the other things don't hit as hard, but that's okay. And you have tons of revenge units, right? Like the Demon Dog. And then of course you are playing Sigma and Demon King because these are so good. And revenge units is like, hey, I'm thinning out my deck more and more and more. So I'm drawing more and more in my revenge units and my deck kind of doesn't end. However, I will note one of the other most played decks in the format is Growth Wolf and their hero power kills just completely outright. If their hero power with that three damage kills your revenge unit, it is exiled from the game, it is removed from the game, you do not have revenge. So that can be a very, very, very bad sign for Raging Demon when like you just want to keep on getting your Sigma over and over and over. If they play it correctly and just banish your Sigma with their hero power, that feels extremely bad. And then of course why this deck is so grindy is because you are playing a lot of removal of Fate of the Unworthy and then Ashford. And, oh, Ashford, right? Killing 3 MP, 5 MP, and then Raging Demon itself just kills so many things. And right now in the format, 3 and 5 MP kills most things. And then, hey, if it's a 6 MP thing, you wait till you have Raging Demon, and then you just, you know, demon on your demon dog, and it kills it. As well as Rebel's Memory, which could just be a board wipe, or Expensive Obliteration. Well, I guess Obliteration is the same MP. Expensive Removal Spell, as well as Cruel Game, what I love about this deck is it is grindy, but talking about cheating on an MP, you can get MP advantage with Master of the Hado, as well as grindy elements as Selfish Predation goes a long way, right? Eating stuff, gaining life can go in a long way when it's a creature battle, right? Your creature is almost about to die and you just Selfless Predation that unit and you just gain seven life. And if the game is going to time, that seven, 14, 21 life, can mean you win compared to you losing. So overall, I really like this deck. It is extremely grindy, but hey, if you like grindy removal based decks, this is definitely a time to be playing Raging Demon because it's a good meta for it. Deck number four is Akuma. However, very, very different. This is a Akuma Senku list. And basically this is all in on Tyrants as well as Serpent Demon Orochi and Orochi so many people are complaining about this card because it is such so so good right and you could be like oh well your opponent can just seal it yeah that's true they can seal it with disarm or the dino or something like that however if your opponent does that guess what this goes to your graveyard okay cool opponent it goes to my graveyard I'm going to rebirth it back that is fantastic so one of the easiest ways to kill or nullify it is uh, disarm effects however that doesn't go that far and then also they still have an 8-8 eight, eight, right those stats are so big so then they still have to deal with an 8-8 eight, eight. yes it's a normal 8-8 eight, eight, but that's still really really hard and a tough order for a lot of decks to deal with and basically your whole deck is around that and senku's around that of flipping your tyrants or getting a rochi and then just using you know valor as well as broad breath frenzy stuff like that just to make them heavy hitters and hit over and over and over and then give them protection with your hero power of course we are getting ways to get a rochi or other things in our graveyard with false throne bringing them back with rebirth like i said and like most black decks these days, you are really trying to cheat on some MP bot with Black Crown's Madness, and this can go a long way in most any black deck or multicolor deck with black in it. Selfless Predation, you know, yet again, eating your slow tyrant to flip it, gaining seven life, especially when you are sacrificing life yourself and your opponent's going to be dealing your life. Selfless Predation is fantastic. 
There is uh, some removal, of course. We are playing Rebels Memory as well as Cruel Game just because those are so good at what they do. And then there is a small revenge theme. We are playing three zombies. This is for the revenge, but also just for the MP ramp and to you know nullify some damage, maybe trade a little bit with what your opponent is doing. But we are playing the two heavy hitter legendary revenge units of Rebel Sigma and Demon King because these are so fantastic. This list is playing two Gathered Souls to get them back to your EX pocket. And to be completely honest, I'm not sure how normal that is for these lists. If this is the complete stock list, I've looked at some lists and they are a little bit different. I am getting this list from a top 100 Japanese player that I saw their deck list on the Teppan channel a couple weeks ago. And this is the list that I played around with a little bit. And I do really like it because hey if you had a demon king or sigma then you gathered souls you get it back and that does feel really good especially to have some recursion because yet again this deck can kind of flounder a little bit and that's my main criticism of this deck it is very very powerful because you're playing with tyrants and serpent demon and all those things and revenge units all these really powerful things that black has to offer but you can have clunky hands the hands that you just kind of like are turning through you're playing some black crowns madness or false thrones but you're not really getting the rebirths or you're not really getting your tyrants and so to add a couple of these revenge units as well as gathered souls can really go a long way in trying to mitigate those clunky hands and just to kind of try to give you more fuel for the fire completely over and over and over again Number five deck that I want to talk about is Dante Devil Trigger. And no, this is not an all action burn style Dante Devil Trigger. This is the purple, black, you know, medium res as it were. And this list I got from Iowa and I haven't changed anything. I played around with this list and I do like it because you are playing Trish and Sea Viper with both of those things. Their HP gets very, very high, very fast. And that is great against a creature-based meta, and especially against all the red decks with Growth Wolf or whatever they are playing. And then the goal is just to pump those up uh, with Frenzies or Heartless Experiments or just Foresights, right? Just be cantripping and getting all the Resonate triggers and idealistically giving them flight with Hookshot just so they can kind of fly over and just kind of win the game through there. Like most any black deck these days, you're playing a place like Black Crowns Madness to trigger resonates as well as just to keep your MP flow going. You are playing a play set of Summon Minions, and I really, really like this card, and that's why I like Purple Black, because Summon Minions basically means you have nine units. And this is an action. You want to be playing a lot of actions, so that's just kind of a two for right there. What I really, really like about this list is you are playing Monstrous Fires, which can kind of cheat out the game just a little bit longer, but especially one Maverick's Memory, because getting to Memory 7 can be a little bit hard, but this is such a good counter when you are at Memory 7. But a playset of Unforeseen Interference, because this deck dies to seal effects like Disarm and Fate of the Unworthy. However, Unforeseen Interference nullifies, negates both of those things, and I think that is so good and makes this deck a little bit more resilient than on face value that it looks. Overall, I really, really like this deck. However, it is an all-in strategy of just these couple units and pumping them up and up and up, and if your opponent does kill that unit, you can kind of just flounder and lose the game. However, there is some resilience with some minions or some defenses uh, like Unforeseen Interference, or let's just be honest, all the pump spells and just getting your Sea Viper to a ridiculous amount of HP is a defense itself. So is this a kind, this is kind of a glass cannon type of deck, right? However, I don't think it's completely fragile. It is very, very powerful. It is fragile, but how this deck is built, it does mitigate some of that fragile nature that these decks tend to have. Overall, those are my pick for five best decks in the meta right now. I do think that there are a lot of other decks that you could be playing in the meta or for a Worlds Qualifier and do good with. There are some other aggressive, even Wrathless Blazing Wall or Thunderwolf type decks, or 
some Morgan decks are running around or Jill decks are running around that are all very good. But for right now, those are my pick for five best decks. And I definitely wanted to talk about that to critically think of why those are so important. And what I think it is, is decks that are the most streamlined, that have a strong game plan and streamline is important because, hey, you have a strong game plan, you're streamlined, so more times than not, you can achieve that game plan. Because if you have a very strong game plan, but it's not that streamlined and you flounder a lot, well, it doesn't matter how strong your end game is. If you don't get there, well, your opponent has a strong game plan, it's probably more streamlined than you, and that means they will win the game way more times than you can. So even if you are not playing one of these decks, think about that. What is your main goal of your deck? How are you winning? And then try to basically win as fast as you can because most of these decks are doing that right now. But thank you all for watching and anyone playing in Worlds, good luck and have fun.